This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. My name is John Moffat, and this is a short lecture just introducing paper F5, Performance Management. Um, and I'll do three things. Firstly, just give you an outline of what performance management is and what the syllabus is for the exam. Um, secondly, to talk about um, the exam itself, the format and the style of the exam. Uh, and thirdly, how to go about studying for it and using open tuition. So first of all, the syllabus. Uh, and what we, the performance manager is doing, overall, um, the job of the performance manager is... What it says is to improve the performance of the business, to improve the profitability, to control the costs. And it's looking for ways and learning various techniques we can employ to go about, again, improving the profitability, uh, selling more, um, cutting costs and so on. Um, and the syllabus headings, uh, first of all, there's that what we call advanced costing techniques. which covers um, a lot of individual areas, which I'm not, I can't go through in detail now. There are lectures on all of them. Uh, but different ways we can go about, if we're producing goods, of costing them. Because we need to know the cost of what we produce uh, as part of being able to determine a selling price and being able to measure the profitability. So different ways of establishing the cost. Uh, again. Okay various different techniques that can be useful. Something called activity-based costing, for example, something called life cycle costing. Uh, again, I, I can't go through them all here. The lectures go through them one by one and explain in detail. But that's uh, a costing, the goods we produce. Um, a second major area is decision-making, where again, a whole series of different techniques which will help managers make decisions. The sort of decisions they have to make are, um, well, what selling price to fix for our goods? Uh, because obviously one factor is cost. You know, we want to um, normally charge a price that's higher than cost. But there are other things to take into account that, um, on the one hand, the higher the price they charge, the more profitable, but very often, the higher the price you charge, the fewer units you sell. So it may be better to charge a lower price if you can sell a lot more. That's just one example of a decision-making technique. Just one more. Um, suppose I, uh, I make two products which both use wood. Perhaps I make two types of desks and they're made out of wood. But this year, for some reason, there's only a limited supply of wood available. And so there's a limit on how many um, of my products, my desks and my chairs, I can produce. And so we could have to sort out, you know, how many desks shall we make and how many chair uh, uh, of one type and how many of the other type of desks shall we make in order to get the maximum profit. That's another technique making decisions, some of you may have heard of it, it's something called linear programming. But again, the whole series of separate techniques which are examinable, which you have to learn. Um, a third area is budgeting. Oh dear, I don't think I can spell budgeting. Uh, you should know something about budgeting from uh, well, both from your own experience, but also from paper F2, or whatever exempted you from it. But of course, most companies prepare budgets, it's not a rule, but perhaps for the for next year. But there's actually a lot involved in preparing a budget. And in the exam, although you can be asked to prepare budgets, um, for this bit, it's much more discussive um, in that why do we do budgets in the first place? may seem an obvious question, uh, but budgets are plans. So budgets aren't always uh, in dollars. You know, if um, my example about um, producing uh, different types of desks out of wood, we'll need to prepare a budget. Uh, 
how many square metres of wood are we going to buy next year? It's a plan. How many do we intend to produce next year? It's a plan, it's a budget, even though ultimately we do tend to put them together and produce a budgeted uh, profit statement. Uh, but also there are different ways of going about producing a, a budget, different approaches to it. There's quite a lot involved, but again, most of it is discussive. What goes along with that is variance analysis. Which again, you should know what I'm basically talking about from paper F2 or whatever I exempted you from. Essentially, um, having done our budgets as we go through next year, we want to keep checking normally monthly uh, whether we're doing better or worse than budget. We look cost by cost, you know, um, how much did our budget we'd spend on labour? How much did we actually spend on labour in January? So if we find we're overspending, maybe we can sort out whatever problem there is for the rest of the year. Well, I say again, you should have only looked at paper F2, and everything from paper F2 is actually examinable again, uh, as far as variance analysis is concerned. Uh, but in paper F5, we do introduce more advanced variances. That's something called um, mix and yield, and something called planning and operational, um, which are much more important for the exam, um, uh, uh, which need learning. And that's primarily uh, arithmetic. Uh, and finally, the fourth main area, it's all right looking at ways of making better decisions, looking at ways of controlling our costs, looking at ways of costing what we produce. But the whole object of the exercise is to improve the performance of the business. And so it's very important that we regularly check on the performance, that we measure the performance. Uh, is the business improving or isn't it? Are we making more profits? Are we hitting our targets? And so on. Uh, and here, part of it um, is pure numbers. Again, paper F2, you should see various ratios you might look at um, in order to measure the profitability. Is the profit higher this year or isn't it? Uh, but it's not simply looking at what we call financial performance, where we're looking at the financial results. But we also need to look at what we call non-financial performance. Now you see, we may have made more profit this year, but if the quality of what we're producing has gone down, the danger is that in the future, if we're delivering less quality, in the future it will hit our sales and future profitability will fall as a result. So we're on the one hand we want year by year to be increasing our profitability but at the same time we do need to check on things like quality to make sure we're maintaining or even improving the quality. So it's looking at both sides, financial measures and non-financial. Now, that may look a very short syllabus, but they're the broad headings. Uh, as I said, under each of those headings, there is a lot involved, uh, lots of different costing techniques, lots of decision, different decision-making techniques, and so on. Um, if you want to see the full syllabus, you'll find it on the ACCA website. But it is split into those headings. Uh, and again, we've got lectures, which I'll discuss later going through uh, each separate bit within each of those settings. All right, so that's essentially uh, what we're studying. As far as the exam itself is concerned, firstly, there are two types of exam available, depending where you're living. But there's a paper-based exam uh, where the exam's printed on paper and you write out your answers on paper, uh, but also a computer-based exam, which is essentially the same exam, same questions, but um, instead of writing it out, uh, everything out on paper, 
uh, you're entering it on the computer. Uh, and although there is a tiny difference, as I'll explain as we go through, essentially they are the same, and there are three sections. Section A is 15 multiple choice questions, each of which is two marks. Now, if you've sat earlier exams, you, you'll know what I mean by multiple choice. But essentially, the, uh, the, the fairly short questions, and it is only two marks each, but a fairly short question, and then a choice of four answers. Uh, and if you're paper-based, you mark the correct answer on a your little table to fill in, answer A, answer B, whichever. Uh, if it's uh, computer-based, you just click what you think is the right answer from the choice of four. So 15 of those, two marks each, a total of um, 30 marks. Uh, just one slight difference with the computer-based. Um, where is the paper-based for all of them? They print out four answers and you choose the correct one. Computer-based, most of them are like that, but for some of them, they might ask you to calculate a figure, but then instead of giving you four choices, actually have you type in the figure uh, in a box they provide. So most of them you'll be just clicking on the right answer, but there do seem to be a few where you just enter the figure. Um, section B is again 15 multiple choice, but it's set out slightly differently. They have three, what they call scenarios, there are three questions where there's more information than there is in the section A ones, so there's a bit more to read. But then on each of the three questions, there are five multiple choice. So in total, 15 multiple choice, but uh, they're all based on the same, well oh, sorry, each group of five is based on the same scenario, the same sort of uh, information. And again, they're two marks each. Uh, finally, section C um, is two what we call long form questions at 20 marks each. And by long form, this is a full question and you're expected to write out a full answer. Um, those two questions will always be split into sections. There might be section A, perhaps do some arithmetic. Section B might be um, talk about problems with what you've done, so uh, discussive. Section C may, uh, may be asking you to explain something. So it's always split up and part of uh, each of the questions will be calculation, part will be writing. Now again, if you're doing paper-based, um, you have an answer book for the calculations, you show your workings in full, because the workings are marked rather than the final answer. And for the written parts, they expect you to write down a full answer. Uh, for the computer base, you do it on computer. So what happens when it's calculations? A spreadsheet will appear so that you can put your numbers in. Uh, when it's written, a um, word processor will appear so you can type out your answer. And I would imagine that most, if not all, of you will like experience of um, spreadsheets, word processors. And this is just like Microsoft Office. It's very standard. Uh, if you don't have experience, then you, if you're doing the computer base, you better practice. Um, but whether you're paper-based or computer-based, those two questions are marked by humans. Sections A and B are marked automatically. Paper-based, they give you a special form to fill in the answers, and then a machine uh, checks the answers. Uh, one of the differences between the two, the paper-based, you've got three hours and 15 minutes for the exam. And in total, if you've added up, because all the questions are compulsory, so there's 100 marks there. Paper-based, you've got three hours, 15 minutes. 
uh, the computer-based exam, CBE. You only have three hours. Which may initially um, look as though oh, paper-based is easier because you get longer. Well, partly it's not much longer, it's only 15 minutes. But also, the ACCA did testing first and found that the computer-based is that little bit quicker in terms of reading the question and because you're only clicking an answer rather than having to copy an answer down somewhere. Um, but overall, it was the same level of difficulty. 100 marks in total, a pass mark, um, as with all ACCA exams, is 50. If you get 49, you've failed. If you get 50, you've passed. Uh, finally, as to, how, as to how to study for the exam, or oh, incidentally, sorry, it's time of the exam, so although I hope when I said May it was clear, again, if you go on the ACCA website, there are specimen exams. There's a specimen exam for the paper based, so you can see what it's like. If you're doing computer based, well, again, there's a specimen there. That, 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 again, you can actually see what it's going to look like. Uh, no, the final bit is how to go about studying and how to use open tuition. All our resources are free. Um, and we've got free lecture notes which work through the syllabus, uh, together with online lectures, uh, which go through the notes. And it is important to use the two together. The lecture notes aren't meant to be a study text. They cover the syllabus, but it's in the lectures that go with them, where we work through the examples and where we discuss and explain and expand on what's in the notes. So it, it is vital to watch the two together. You can download the lecture notes and print them out. Uh, the lectures, the, they can only be watched online. Um, in addition, we've got practice tests for each chapter. So when you've been through a chapter and watched the lectures, you can find an online test of just five multiple choice questions, which you have got online just to check that you, you've understood what was in the lecture. Uh, when you've um, finished your study, when you've been through everything, we've also got a practice exam. Again, it's online, it's just like the real exam, except there's no section C. Section C needs a human to mark. So there's only sections A and B. But the idea is you you go all the way through, it's just you were in a real exam. At the end, it will tell you um, how well or badly you did. And you can go back through the questions uh, and see which ones you got right, which wrong, and explanations as to why the answer is what it is. And the questions, although it's section A and B, so in total there are 30 questions, the computer are the Obituation computer selects those 30 at random from a large bank of questions. So every time you attempt this exam, you're likely to see different questions. In addition, and very important, we've got forums. There are two forums for F5. Uh, one forum, a general F5 forum, where if you have any problems, you can uh, post them. And it's for other students, uh, well, for students to help each other. So if you've got a problem, you can post it there and other students will chip in and, and help you out. The other F5 forum is an Ask the Tutor forum. Where again, if you have any problems, weren't sure about something in a lecture or something went wrong in a question you've tried, if you're asking Ask the Tutor, uh, then I'll answer within 24 hours and usually a lot sooner. And all of that is free, free of charge. Um, and then again, the lecture notes and the lectures, they cover more than enough to be able to pass the exam well. One final thing though, is if you're going to pass the exam, 
all right, you've got to uh, do all the studying, but it's vital to get as much practice as you can at exam standard questions, to get used to the style of the questions, the way they try and trick you. You know, even on a topic which you understand perfectly, you'll find it's very easy to misread or misinterpret a question and get it wrong. And the only way to overcome that is by practicing as much as possible. And so although we've got the practice tests and the practice exam, it's vital that you buy a revision kit or an exam kit uh, from one of the ACCA approved publishers. Some call it revision kit, some call it exam kit. Um, but they contain lots and lots of exam standard questions for practice, together obviously with answers and explanations. And again, it's impossible to get enough practice. You're not going to pass on study alone. You must study and then you must practice and get used to the style. Jolly good, well, I hope that was helpful. Um, and now it's time to start watching the lectures and get to studying.